tonight, folks, 60 Minutes of Fun and Music brought to you by Panatooth Paste and Sal Hepatica. And tonight, a big celebration. Fred Allen's coming back to the old town hall. He's bringing Portland and the Mighty Allen Art Players in his baggage, and they're all going to give us the biggest show we've had in months. Town Hall tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Well, here we are at the railroad station, and Fred Stain is just about due. He's coming in from Hollywood, you know, where he's just finished making a picture called Thanks a Million for 20th Century Fox. Everybody's here to greet him. Peter Van Steen and the Arpana Tubadors are waiting. An all-star group of amateurs. Say, hey, here comes the train. Uh-huh. Now let's watch the Fred when the train stops. He's blowing. He's blowing. And there he is lifting Portland Hoff off that train. Look at that crowd. They're giving three cheers for Fred Allen. Yeah! Everybody, hi, Tiny. What? No brass band? Yes, the band's here too, Fred. Okay, Peter. There goes the band of stars and stripes forever as Fred Portland and the Mighty Allen Knife players start the parade from the depot to the old town hall. The friends all around the country are standing by to welcome them home tonight. Folks from coast to coast drop everything to listen. At Washington, England's building battleships, Mr. Secretary. What about the ratio? Ratio? That reminds me. I've got to get my radio fixed. Fred Allen is back. It's town hall tonight. At Boulder City. Why did the president speak at Boulder Dam on Tuesday, Father? Why, he wanted to stay in the house Wednesday, daughter. Fred Allen is back at town hall tonight. San Diego, California. Land sake, Guy, the fairgrounds deserted. Where's all the people? Home listen to their radios, lady. It's town hall tonight. <laughs> Suggestion to you. In just a few moments, Fred Allen's going to start his show in town hall, and you have just time to call up one or two of your friends and tell them that Fred is back on the air. They'll be grateful to you. Don't you think so? And now here we are at the door of town hall. There's Fred greeting the crowd as it pours through the door. Let's listen to what he says. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, folks, but an apple at night won't keep the doctor away from the town hall. Step right in for the housewarming. Hi there, Sheriff. Ethan Allen, how are things in Hollywood? Fine, Sheriff, fine. Did you get a dive orange out there? No, I went for business, not for pleasure. Step right in, folks, and welcome. Evening, Mrs. Westmore. Good evening, Mr. Allen. Heard you been in Hollywood. That's right. Clark Gable sends his love to you. Clark Gable? Ooh. Quick, water somebody. Miss Westmore's fainted. I should have brought regards from Wallace Beery. Now, don't crowd, folks, but hurry, 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 hurry. The band's ready, Fred. Okay, Tiny, what's the first number? That song, I've got a pocket full of sunshine from your new picture, Thanks a Million, Fred. It's Dick Powell's picture, Tiny, and how he sings that song. Let's go. I got a pocket full of sunshine and a heart full of song. And when I see you, all I want to do is pass it along, pass it along. Pass it in your little cloudy front, the world can go wrong. While you've got a pocket full of sunshine and a heart full of Colossal combination of comedy and capers, Fred Allen in person. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before starting the show, I'll read you the town hall bulletin for tonight. Hodge White is calling band practice at the G.A.R. Hall for Friday night. Now, Hodge wants to warn all of you musicians who chew tobacco to be mighty careful where you bail out around the hall. If you see a brass thing about four feet high that looks like a cuspidor, it's Hodge's French horn, so act accordingly. Last year, the horn gave off a fine spray during rehearsals, and along about May, the ceiling in the hall turned mahogany. So much for symphonic precautions, and now, now for the town hall news. Is the picture sheet back from the laundry, Tiny? It's stuck for tonight, Fred, and down it comes. Coming down formal, hey? All right. As long as we're parked here, we won't need the lights, you think? Off to go. The projector starts, and we bring you the latest news of the week. The town hall news sees nothing, shows all. Radio City, New York. Prominent radio comedian returning to Town Hall Tonight program conducts door-to-door survey to check on listeners. Town Hall news camera follows Fred Allen as he questions radio public incognito. What do you want? Pardon me, mister. You won't get no coffee out of me, buddy. Oh, I'm not panhandling. I'm taking a poll. Going to open a barber shop, eh? Well, I shave myself. No, no, you don't understand. You're talking to America's foremost radio comedian. No kidding. Glad to know you, Mr. Benny. Yes? Excuse me, lady, I'm taking a straw vote. Oh, well, I'm from upstate, and I'm voting for McKinley, as usual. Well, what is it? Good evening, madam. Have you a radio? Yeah, and it's paid for. You go to the wrong house, long puss. What is your favorite radio program, madam? Major Bowes. What's it to you? Who do you like uh, next to Major Bowes? Major Bowes. But this is only Wednesday. What do you do until Sunday night? I wait for Major Bowes. New York City, New York. Mayor LaGuardia proclaims October a month of noiseless nights. Anti-noise violators will be prosecuted. Down Hall News shows what New Yorkers may expect. An anti-noise trial. Next case, Mini Twerp. Disturbing the peace at the Roxy Theater. Guilty or not guilty, Minnie? Uh, I was only taking the cellophane off my almond bar, Judge. She was making noise. It wasn't the cellophane, Judge. It was the almond. The what? Almond nuts. That's contempt of court, Perky Day. Homes will be broken up. Farewells like this one will be common. Oh, this cruel law. Forcing my poor boy to leave home. Oh, don't cry, Ma. I can practice my saxophone in Philadelphia. Goodbye. Oh, my God. Police cars will be ready for noise emergencies. We'll soon be hearing calls like this. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Man singing in bathtub at 91 Glove Park Avenue. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. This is 9 up, Chief. Okay, through this door here. Have you seen Listen, Chief. She's in the bathroom. Break down that door. I see walks the blooming wrong. Come clean, buddy. You're under arrest. But I say I'm having my tub. Well, it's against the law. Oh, you Americans. You say it's a violation to sponge. It ain't that. It's Andy Noise Month, and you're singing. Come on, you pinch, mister. Grab his arm, Chief. Here, here, stop it. I'm now, safe. hold him. Hold him, Clancy. He's soapy. Let, let me alone now. Let me go. Yeah. Imagine this guy in a bathtub on Wednesday night. We'll hold him for observation. He thinks it's Saturday. Town Hall News shows results of campaign. Before noise was outlawed, Broadway sounded like this. Ah, but what a difference. Today, Broadway sounds like this. Washington, D.C. United States government plans drive on poultry racketeers. G-men to crack down on gunmen who cost consumers millions annually. Town Hall News shows poultry racketeers in action. The scene, a poultry store in the Bronx, New York City. Ye old kosher poultry shoppy, Mrs. Marcus responding. No, no, I got no broilers. No, my place was robbed less nice. Yes, poultry racketeers. I'm all that's left in the store, and I'm no kidding, so goodbye. Oh, I 
putting on the top hat. Uh, this is what can I do for you two gentlemen? Pat down, Ma. This is a shakedown. Make it snappy, doll. Where's your phone? Oi, more racketeers. Who is it? No cracks. Where's your hands? Hands, man. Last night I'm robbed. Crazy two bullets and again, Ah, uh, Somebody beat us to it, Butch. I ain't quitting here empty-handed. What's in that safe, Ma? Confidentially, I'm holding out. In the safe, so frozen, I'm concealing one kitten. Open it up. It's one second only. Sarah, she's convalescing. Don't stall. Open the safe. Okay. <laughs> no, no quiet, Sarah. It's a stick up. Any eggs under that dodo? I told you she's convalescing. Uh, Tell her to lay a couple of eggs pronto. We ain't had no breakfast. Tell her yourself. I wasn't forcing the issue. Shake a leg. Shake a leg, Sarah. I'll blow your feathers off. Uh, here, put it away. The pistol. She's nice already. Look, I'm counting three. We're going to get eggs or else. Come on, Sarah. One. Uh, so give, Sarah. Two. Three. <laughs> she'd come true. Nice work, Sarah. Yeah, wait a minute. What kind of an egg is this? No. Sure, there ain't no shell on it. So, could you do any better in a hurry? <laughs> Once again, the Town Hall News brings you the outstanding sound of the week. Detroit, Michigan, World Series opens today. Chicago Blanks, Detroit, and first game, the Blanks. And now, Tiny, how about a scene or one of those talking pictures you, you used to put on before I went away? <laughs> not now, Fred. Why, here you are just home with us again, and we're not going to take much time even for salopatica. No? I simply want to say this, though. Friends, one of the products that makes it possible for us to present Fred Allen in town hall tonight is salopatica, the mineral salt laxative. Now, whenever you need that kind of medicine, we suggest that you take salopatica. It will cleanse your body of poisonous waste speedily, gently, thoroughly. And that's not all it does. When you have waste in your body, you also have an acid condition throughout your system. And salopatica is the laxity that also combats the acidity, building up your alkaline reserves so necessary to good health. In other words, salopatica corrects both troubles. So keep salopatica in your medicine cabinet. Don't suffer from a half-sick logy condition, sick headache, upset stomach. Take salopatica and get a head start towards buoyant, alert, Normal health in just no time. as I, Panna Troubadours, have just played the Vitalis theme song from the top of your head. When you get down to your teeth, it's I, Panna, of course. I've been asked to make an impromptu announcement, ladies and gentlemen. Pop Mullen, leading vitamin monger and soul lessee of the lunch wagon, Bell of the Gutter, says that the man with the indigestion who has been picketing the wagon all week is an imposter. 
Pop says you can't possibly catch gas Silas in the wagon because he's cooking with electricity only. Now, on Tuesday at... Oh, no. Quiet, quiet, please. Whoever's raising that hue and cry, you can stay, but the cry will have to go. Hello? Well, 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 sir, as I live and try to keep these bulldog shoes from snapping at the calves on my legs, if it isn't Portland. Yes, I dreamed last night that you were back from Hollywood. So you came over before you woke up to make sure, huh? Oh, I knew you were coming back. Did a little bird tell you? Oh, I wouldn't hear a bird this soon. Your picture isn't out yet, is it? Couldn't you... Couldn't you have welcomed me over the phone? Say, you're lucky I'm alone. Papa wanted to come with me. Oh, I wish he had come. You know, the last time Papa came down here in his dress suit, the smell of camphor cleared up my asthma. Gosh, I wish I could have made the trip to California with you. There's enough confusion in Hollywood without you. I don't care so much about Hollywood. I'd just like to see what's going on around the country. <laughs> you don't even know what's going on in New York. Did you hear about the Bear Lewis fight? Oh, was there a fight? Well, I'll admit I use the word loosely. <laughs> a fight is where two people punch each other, isn't it? That's what Thomas said. Did he see the altercation? Not exactly. He had a two-dollar seat. Really? How did he know what was going on? Hear a rumor? No, he took his radio set and tuned in from where he was sitting. Say, yes, very good... All right, let's drop the whole thing. But Papa felt sorry for Joe Lewis. Lewis won and your father felt sorry for him? Yes, Papa had to fight a man before he went on his honeymoon, too. Who did Papa have to fight? Mama's father. Oh. I wish you'd do your father a dirty trick for me. You mean go home? Exactly. Oh, no, you don't. Mr. Dollars! Mr. Dollars! Uh, oh, 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 oh. I always... He's a maiden in the strand. Now listen, Robert. If I lay my hands on that mail order suit, you blow a tweed fuse. Now, I'm not paging trouble, Junior, but you rest one unsanitary finger on this lapel and I'll up you. And Mr. Bowers can do it, too, Mr. Allen. If Mr. Bowers is ever kidnapped, you can ransom him with a phone slug. You could go just so far with me, Alan, and one, two, three, I'm on you. And four, five, six, and it's vice versa. <laughs> Mr. Bowers is pretty tough, Mr. Allen. I'll say with a rounded down. <laughs> you look like ten cents worth of fluff to me. Where I come from, men are men. Is that why you had to leave, Mr. Allen? No. <laughs> That was good, Barney. <laughs> I wouldn't take that from an octogenarian. Now, look, folks, I just came back tonight. I'm Well, to... that's what Mr. Bowers came to see you about. Oh, yes, I've been trying to split an infinitive to get a word in edgewise here. Going from the abstract to the concrete, what's on your mind, Mr. Bowers? <laughs> Mr. Bowers wants to arrange a public welcome for you. Yes, that's my racket, Alan. Fenton C. Bowers, C.W.A. Don't tell me you're a government project. C.W.A. is professional welcome arranger. Oh. Yes, Mr. Bowers arranges welcomes for people. He should have arranged one for himself before he showed up here. You'll need Mr. Bowers to stir up a welcome, Mr. Allen. Lord, yes. You've got plenty of enemies, brother. You've been on the radio three years. Have you any references? Tell him about Frank Buck's welcome, Mr. Bowers. Lord, I tore the town wide open for Buck. Met him up at the dock with a rhinoceros, two mongoose, and 400 paid-up elks with teeth akimbo. And what about Admiral Bird? Oh, 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 the bird welcome was Bowers at his best. I jinx super. And oh, boy, was it noisy. Why, the din was nerve-wracking. At high noon, 3,000 housewives slammed their icebox doors in salute. Are your, uh, are your welcomes expensive, Brother Bowers? They're all prices. For $85, I can give you a fair welcome. 50 Boy Scouts wig-wagging. <laughs> oh, that would look silly. Boy Scouts wagging their wigs at Mr. Allen. Have you anything semi-rousing for around $15? Lord, you don't expect to rock a hullabaloo for $15. I go the whole hog, Mr. Allen. You only come back once. Fifteen dollars is a lot of drachmas, though. 
Well, if you want a dog it, I've got a $10 celebration. What's that one, Mr. Bowers? For $10, I rent two orphans. They meet you at the train and recite. Recite what? A verse I wrote for cheapskates. How does it go, Mr. Bowers? Be quiet, please. <coughs> at Woodchuck, Ermin, Partridge, Grouse. Welcome, Alan. You're a... I'm a what? For $10, you're no peacock. <laughs> What you need is a mirror, Mr. Allen. Yes, you can take a good look at it and give free rousing cheers for yourself. Why, you... And you, too, and you. Hey, put that in your pipe and inhale. I'm off. I guess I'm off, too, Mr. Allen. There's no doubt about it. Goodbye, Portland. Howie, ho! <laughs> And now, without the help of Mr. Bowers, we welcome the Town Hall Quartet and their guest star, the guy from the Isle of Capri. There's a guy who got me full of fear. A knife between his teeth, a ring in each ear. He thinks I'm after his wife, and now he's after my life. He's from the Isle of Capri. With blood in his eye, the guy is chasing me. Wherever I go, I never go slow. I know that he is following me, the guy from the Alaka Street. I walk in the park, he hides in the dark. But I can tell when Gallica smell the guy from the Alaka Street. I can't take the chance and explain the romance. That's why I worry a best so. He won't understand, all I did was kiss her hand. He wants to pickle me with his stiletto. If I want to laugh, I've got to go fast. And keep on jump ahead of the chucks to get from the Alaska tree. Oh, contato dell'amore io. Upon the island of Capri, oh. Ah, quando ha venduto questa bebelista, l'issimo, bambino, sento che tu dici. Upon the island of Capri. Dr. Moon was right. I kissed my hand as she went by. You know, she said to me, much to my surprise, yeah, and rolled her eyes upon the island of Capri. And then I bent to kiss her hand. And then I bent to kiss her hand. the mug inside of the jug. The Look guy from the Alcatri. Thank you, boy. Now, Connie, I hear you've been doing a good deal of talking while my back was turned this summer. Why, yes, Fred, I, I have said a word or two now and then. Well, own up. Now, what have you been talking about? <laughs> well, a lot of things. But, but here, I'm going to show one of them to you and to our friends here in the audience. I hold it above my head so everybody can see it. You know what this is, friends? Yes, sure. Of course. <laughs> of course, you all recognize it. Now, will this gentleman here in the front row tell us what it is? Why, it's a package of Ipana toothpaste. Right. The famous red and yellow striped box that Ipana toothpaste comes in. I'm going to open this box now, just as you would, if you were about to start using a new tube of Ipana. First thing I take out is an instructive little folder. Briefly, it tells you why the health of your gums is important, how best to take care of them. My dentists recommend Ipana toothpaste. And furthermore, it urges you to see your dentist regularly. But there's something else in that box, Tiny. Yes, sir, Fred, and here it is. The shining red and yellow tube of Ipana toothpaste. You've noticed what an attractive package it is, from the handy black cap to the black seal at the bottom. But that, of course, is unimportant compared to what the contents of this tube can mean to you. What can it mean? Cleaner teeth. Teeth that are brighter, more sparkling. Healthier gums. Gums that are firmer, more resistant to infection. Surely it's worth your while to use Ipana toothpaste to brush your teeth and massage your gums with it. So why don't you get a tube tonight or tomorrow morning? And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the season for hay fever and the mighty Allen art player. Those two plagues for which science has never found a cure. These actors, so-called, who have hitched their wagons to a groundhog, are ready to resume their barnstorming careers and will lay their first official egg of the season tonight. 
They present a melod... <laughs> they present a melodrama of modern hillbillies entitled Once an Amateur, Always an Amateur, But Never a Bride. Over to you, Peter. <laughs> For the amateur she gave me. Oh, dang your hair, lips, Harry. Can't I sing without you giving me the gong all this? Oh, shit, you're yet, Paul. You always was a gonger. You always will be a gonger. You always uh, 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 was a gonger. Well, it ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Four gongs was invented. Singer like me could pick up a good vegetable dinner after a performance. Well, well, the gong's more humane for actors than a ripe tomato. Uh, say, where's them children of ours? Oh, no, gone hunting, reckon. A uh, hunting? Yep, took their guitars. They're hunting sponsors. Season's open for sponsors. Lord, they're running wild. One got away from me yesterday. Must have been this long. Well, well, all our young and his good boys, all except Pam. He run off to the big city for a national hookup. Oh, Pam's all right. Best sweet potato and I'm the three. Best sweet potato. <laughs> Never, I hate sweet potatoes that get in my mouth. You yes, see, they confuse me. Oh, oh well. did, Paul. Best, but our Pam is all right. Best sweet potato player in nine counties. I'd have kicked them big city notions right out of his hide if he hadn't up and kicked me first. <laughs> But take his shoes off, and Pev's a good boy. Oh, wish I was young again, could get on one of them amateur programmers. Oh, you was a great one in your day, Sarah. Sure was, so. Oh, slap me perpendicular. <laughs> Every time you opened your yap, you got the gong, didn't sure you? Sure did, so. Never missed the gong. You was the first G woman, all right, right? Sure here. was, so, right now. Listen. Huh? There's our Pev. Listen at him. I know. I thought he'd come back with his sweet potato dragon. Oh, ain't nobody can play that yam like our Pev. Hi, Ma. Hi, Pebby. Hi, son. Well, Pev, what's new on relief? Happy? I come back to tell you I made good in the city. How do you all know you made good? Well, after I played my sweet potato, a fella spoke up and asked me for my autograph. Smooth going, Pev. You give it to him? Yup. I can't write, so I'll give it to him verbal. Midland glad to see you back, sir. You hope you're ready to settle down now that you've had your fling. I ain't come home to roost, Pappy. I'm going back to the city and make big money. Money? The son of mine take money? Pev, this family's been amateurs for three generations. Me and your more chair was amateurs before you. Why, you cut your first tooth on a gong. Sure did, sir. Well, I don't care. Amateur acts is all taking money nowadays. Why, that'll make you rank professional. You can't do it. I can so. You can't nothing. I can too. You can't. I'm a going out with a bunch of amateurs to make personal appearances. What personal appearances, son? In them there movie houses. The amateurs appears in the flesh. Hush, son. That ain't decent. You can't disgrace us like that. No, son, don't take money. You'll break your pappy's heart. Hand me my shotgun, Sherry. I'll learn him a lesson. Well, take care, Pap. You loaned it to neighbor Bone for his daughter's wedding. So it did. Well, I reckon I'm off. Maybe they can shame Pev out of his crazy notions. Come in, sir. Been fine, Hannah. How you been, and you little? We oh, yeah. been fine, pal. Listen, chair, Hannah. You too, chair, Luke. Take yourself a couple of chairs, chair. <laughs> Take a good look at your brother, Pev, chair, because he's a getting out of chair the house here for good. Oh, yeah. Good. We've been a happy family living here in this little one room and well. Ain't nothing fancy, but the well's operating. But Pev's broke it up now. Where are you going, Pev? I'm a going to make personal appearances. He's a turning traitor, that's what. Oh, now, Pev. Get out, son, Paul, sweet potato. Hold on, Pev. Hannah and me's going away, too. What? Yes, we got us an offer to be amateurs in movie shorts. For money? Of course, for money. Times has changed, Pappy. You mean you're all alone and leaving your Pappy and Ma? Let him go, Sherry. You and me will just start all over again. Oh, now don't take on so, Pappy. Even my little Hannah chair is again me. Mm, movies and personal appearances. I reckon there just ain't no more amateurs like you and me, Paul. No, reckon they ain't. <laughs> 
Nowadays, amateurs is all working for money. Professionals is all working on sustaining programs. <laughs> well, I reckon we better get a go in. Yep, come on, Hannah. Go on, get on. And don't let your guitars and sweet potato stop in my acoustics again. Goodbye, Ma. Well, that's done it, Terry. Sure has, Paul. We're right back here where we started 20 years ago, come town hall tonight. Sure do. I mean, sure are, Paul. Children's all gone. But I still got you, Paul. You got something there, Terry. Oh, the children is all turned against us, but I'll always be an amateur to you, won't I, Pappy? Kiss me, Terry. You sure will, Terry. <laughs> Oh, now you kiss me, Paul. <laughs> Tiny, I received a telegram a little while ago from a friend of mine in the city, and I think you'd like to read it. Well, let's see it. Oh, uh -huh. say, you just bet I'll read it. Say, this makes a wonderful illustration for what I was just getting ready to talk about. Now, here's the telegram. Sorry I can't welcome you back to town hall tonight. Stop. Got a terrible cold. Signed, Bob Stevens. I was sort of expecting him tonight, too, <laughs> Tiny. And the point is, he might have been here to join in our welcome to you. Yes, friend, if this man had drunk two teaspoonfuls of salopatica in a glass of water when he first felt that cold coming on, and then kept on a few days with smaller doses, I'll bet you he'd be okay tonight. You see, it's all very simple. When you have a cold, you have poisonous waste in your body and an acid condition throughout your system. And sal hepatica is the laxative that both rids you of those wastes and also combats acidity. Start with those two teaspoonfuls. But don't stop there. Keep on with sal hepatica in smaller doses until your cold is entirely gone. That builds up the alkaline reserve and resistance to colds as well. Now, it's too bad Bob Stevens couldn't have been here tonight, but if he'll get a bottle of sal hepatica and use it, Following the scientific way to treat a cold successfully, he'll be with us next Wednesday night, and we'll expect all the rest of you here, too. Presents his all-star amateur contest. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we present a group of winners who distinguished themselves in the town hall amateur contest, chaperoned by my good friend Frank Crummett, while I was out in Hollywood. These boys and girls will compete for a grand prize of $100 in cash and a week's engagement at the Roxy Theater in New York City. Now, we have no applause machine on the stage this evening, for the winner of this contest will not be determined by the audience here in the town hall. Tonight's winner will be selected by you folks who are listening to your radios at home. Now, we're asking you to choose your favorite, mail in your vote so that we receive it no later than next Tuesday morning, and if you will do your part after the contest is over tonight, we shall be happy to do ours and award the prize uh, next Wednesday night. The winner of the $75 prize for last week's contest is Dwayne Harmon. Tiny tells me that Dwayne played the trumpet and recently won the Midwest Amateur Contest in Omaha before he came to the town hall. Congratulations, Dwayne. And now for our contest tonight, ladies and gentlemen. First, we welcome Mr. James Smith. Mr. Smith is here in a chef's uh, outfit. 
With a table, you're from Haverhill, Massachusetts, yes, Mr. Yes, sir. You come up with your accoutrements, did yes, you? I did. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Smith. <coughs> it's not catching, I can assure you. You have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Mr. Smith calls himself the musical chef and has a large table here filled with a motley collection of bowls, egg cups, custard bowls, oatmeal bowls. And uh, you play music on these, do you, yes, uh, yes. Mr. Smith? You play, uh, what, do you, what are those you use for hammers there? Those are ladies' shoe trees. Ladies' shoe trees, and you spank the bowls to get music <laughs> with the... You use the shoe trees to get the footnotes, I imagine. <laughs> How do you... Uh... Ah, that surprised me more than it did you, really, Mr. Smith. <laughs> How do you get these uh, these dishes tuned up? You buy them in tune? Well, these are just ordinary dishes that I went around different corkers to test in the bowl so oh. I could find the scale, the you... chromatic scale. Oh, that's fine. You go into a five and ten, say, and give me an E-flat egg cup. And then... <laughs> <laughs> well, that saves a lot of trouble. And what are you going to play for us tonight, Mr. Smith? I'm going to play a little medley of Marching Through Georgia and over there. Uh, marching through Georgia and over there. I'm afraid Ethiopia is going to have trouble with China here tonight. I'm not sure. <laughs> Would you go right ahead with your musical sources there? Thank you. Gentlemen, we're proud of many of the boys and girls who have been up here on some of our earlier amateur evenings. Uh, we have a, as you probably know, a town hall unit now. The, uh, the, some of our earlier winners have banded together and have been touring around the country. This week they're in Baltimore. And I just wanted to mention this tonight because the boys and girls have pooled some of their spare resources and sent me a telegram, and I'm very happy to receive it, and I just wanted to let them know if they're listening in. It says, We who have kept the fire burning while you are enjoying your Hollywood vacation, welcome you back to the air. Stop. We are enjoying our tour and trust you had a wonderful vacation. Welcome home. That's from Al Mitchell, the Master of Ceremonies, and Marilyn McKay, Joe Williams, Victor Mizzy, Irving Taylor, and the other boys and girls who are with our town hall tonight amateur show. Incidentally, Friday and Saturday of this week, the uh, town hall amateurs at the Capitol Theater, Lancaster, PA, Sunday at the Stanley Theater, Camden, New Jersey, and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at the Strand Theater in York, Pennsylvania. And I certainly wish all of the boys and girls the best of luck on their tour. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to Arthur Young, singer and guitar player from Bison, New York. Is that right, Arthur? Buffalo. Buffalo? Oh, Buffalo. It's Bison and Buffalo. <laughs> practically the same thing. <laughs> Arthur is here. Is that the... I never knew... Arthur is wearing one of those Stetson hats about a four-gallon, I'd say, isn't it? Oh, Twenty. Twenty-gallon hat, is it? And a leather jacket, and he's carrying a guitar. I never knew Buffalo was so far west until I saw your... Right around the Buffaloes. Huh? Right around the Buffaloes. Around the Buffaloes, eh? You're a guitar player and singer, Arthur? Right. You are. Incidentally... You, you, I hope so. You think so. I, I hope, hope so. so. Incidentally, you're a left-handed guitar player, aren't you? Right. Southpaw. Southpaw. You have to restring the guitar the other way to play left-handed, do you? That's what I do. You have to mix it up, huh? Right. You'd have an awful time with a harp, wouldn't you, getting all of those <laughs> things on me? <laughs> what are you... What are you going to... <laughs> what are you going to play for us tonight, Arthur? 
I'm going to sing, Why Did I Get Married? Why did you get married and play at the same time? Yeah, well, you if you ever get married, you'll have no time to play, so you make the most of it now. All right, ahead. Come and gather all around me, you boys who want a wife. Listen to my warning, you'll thank me all your life. For I was once a bachelor, and I wish I was again. I'd never give up that single bliss to wear a ball and chain. Oh, why did I get married? Why did I don this neck yoke? If I talk back, she'll give me a crack, and I'm liable to get my neck broke. When I pop the question, here's the answer that I got. You'll have to build a house on it before I'll share your lot. I went to see her father, and he cussed to beat the band. Before I got the old man's foot, I took his daughter's hand. Oh, why did I get married? What can the reason be? Want to see the missing link? Just take a look at me. My wife, she keeps the bank account, but I keep right on working. I have to wear one shirt so long, it looks like an old lace curtain. She's getting fatter every day, she weighs 400 gross. I haven't kissed her now for years, cause I can't get that close. Oh, why did I get married? Look what I went and done. It costs three times as much for two to live as cheap as one. I leave only gentlemen, we have a group of boys, six boys, six are you boys, the Yugoslavian Tamboritza Orchestra. Is that correct? That's correct. I got it all right. That's are you right. the manager of the band, are you? I'm just a spokesman. Spokesman. Just right. a spokesman, are you? Yeah. What is your name? David Blosen. David Blosen. Glad to know you. My name's Alan, Mr. Blosen. I've heard of you. Happy to have you up here. We can, you, you heard uh, Arthur singing that, didn't you? The yodel. Oh, yes, sir. I don't know where he got the lay, but the low comes from Buffalo. Lay, but... <laughs> That's confusing. Now, what are you boys going to... You have an odd collection of instruments here, haven't you? Why is it no one with a Ukrainian or, or Slovakian orchestra ever plays a trombone? Why is that? <laughs> I guess you play a trombone in those little countries that goes over into Italy and have to start more trouble, I imagine. <laughs> Take for the string in. What are you going to play for us tonight? We're going to play Repass Bang. Repass Bang. Go right ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Slavian Tamboritzer Orchestra from New York City. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, a very pleasant-looking boy confronts me here. One Kenneth Yarrow from Jersey City. Is that right, Kenneth? That's right, Mr. Allen. And you are a singer, Kenneth? I'm making an attempt at it. You're making an attempt. Something tells me you're going to be very good. I have intuition, if you know what that is. Oh, uh, right. You wouldn't know it to look at. I'm so deceitful. I mean, you wouldn't know it. I, I'm just telling you confidentially. And you are a, according to my little slip here, you are a bass baritone? That's right, Mr. Allen. Uh, haven't you decided, or is your voice changing? But if it's right that way, it's in between. Oh, it's in. We're fortunate. We're just yeah. sort of catching you in a hyphenated stage of your right. vocal <laughs> career. I, uh, <laughs> uh, do you work for the uh, the Standard Oil Company, do you? That's right. Well, well. <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> I uh, figured it was about time, you know, jokes come back every seven years, and I figured that one was about due. It's been a good <laughs> 30 years since anyone dug that up. But you, uh, as a uh, as an employee, <laughs> an employee of the Standard Oil Company, how do you like our little place here? Oh, is it little? Yeah. You're probably standing in the biggest filling station in the world today, Kenneth. <laughs> America gets more gas out of this building than all of us. <laughs> Competition. And you, uh, uh, what are you going to sing for us, Kenneth? Old Man River from Old, the showboat. Old Man River? Uh, you work for the Standard Oil Company? Oil and, <laughs> oil and water don't dig, you know. I, well, I hope you come out all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, okay. <laughs> That old man river, he must know something, but don't say nothing. He just keep rolling, he keeps on rolling along. He don't land potatoes, he don't land cotton, and them that land them is soon forgotten. But old man river. He just keeps rolling along. You and me, we sweat and we strain, body or leg and racked with pain. Oh, that bond, live up that damn bell. Get a little drunk and you land in jail. I get weary. And sick of trying, I'm tired of the living and fear of dying. But old man river, he just keeps rolling. Oh. Jersey City, rather, singing Old Man River, and very good, too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the two of you boys want to stand on one side and two of the other. Would you rather? Is it all right? I, uh, it's your... <laughs> You're entitled to the use of the building, of course. If I'm in the way, just put me away and forget about me. With... The, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to four uh, affable-looking gentlemen here. The Friendly Four, they call themselves, so I don't anticipate any trouble, boys. <laughs> the Friendly Four from Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. Is that right? Correct. Well, where is Pine Grove, if I'm not too... Uh, About uh, 40 miles west of Harrisburg. East of Harrisburg. Forty miles east, east of Harrisburg, Harrisburg yes. Pine Grove. I've never... What is the principal uh, industry at Pine Grove? I'm, I'm interested. The name sounds familiar, but I can't place the metropolis. I believe Tanning is the most important. Industry. Tanning is... Tanning. Tanning leather, yes. Tanning leather is, huh? I suppose most of the people... Uh, it's uh, unusual for the population of a town to hide during the day, generally. <laughs> Well, I'm stuck. What if you can think of better jokes, fellas? You're perfectly all right. It's all right with me. But I, uh, the name intrigues me. The Friendly Four. Is it a uh, trade name? Is it just a name of a club or something? Just a male quartet. Just a male quartet. The Friendly, friendly Four. Yes. I don't know. Names are deceiving. I saw a good humor man with a long face last Sunday. <laughs> What are you going to sing for us, boy? Street Urchins Medley. Street Urchins Medley. Thank you very much. Go right ahead. 
And so we'll sing a song of cities, cities great and small, driving little ditties, tell about them all. New York has her lobsters, Boston has her dean, Baltimore's a place for oysters, but for lasses. New Orleans. Roll them bones, roll them bones, roll them on the square. Roll them on the sidewalk, the streets, or anywhere. We roll them in the morning. We roll them in the night. We roll them bones a whole day long. While the cops are out of sound. Zoom, zoom, sha, zoom, zoom, who wants to shine? Zoom, zoom, my zoom, name zoom, is Teddy zoom, and I'm zoom, over ready. Zoom, my brush is on you and zoom, my black king is fine. Zoom, zoom. Hi there, mister, don't you want to shine? Roll them bones, roll them bones, roll them on the square. Roll them on the sidewalk, the streets or anywhere. We roll them in the morning. We roll them in the night. We roll them bones a whole day long. While the cops are out of sight, we roll them bones. Thank you, boys. We've heard the friendly force, Pine Grove, Pennsylvania, ladies and gentlemen. And now we've come to Charlie, Charlie Sinnott. Is that right, Charlie? That's right, Mr. Allen. An accordionist? Uh, you are an accordionist. You're not just carrying that thing on your stomach there as a pose, as an idle gesture. What are you going to play for us, sir, Charlie? I'd like to play the 12th Street Rag. Well, you'd like to. There's nothing to stop you. All right. Go right ahead. The 12th Street. It must be pleasant to play one of the, an accordion in the summer, air conditioning your stomach in that fashion. The 12th Street Rag. Go right ahead. <laughs> with Charlie. Charlie was playing the 12th Street rag and got up around 4th Street and found out that he hadn't unbuttoned the accordion. We just <laughs> almost didn't hear the last eight clock there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that ends tonight's All-Star Amateur Contest. And please don't forget <laughs> that we want all of you who have heard our amateurs at home tonight to help us select the winner of our $100 grand, uh, dollar grand prize and the week's engagement at the Roxy Theatre. It is your contest, ladies and gentlemen, and your votes alone will decide who wins. All, all you have to do is to vote for your favorite, is to send a postcard or a letter to me, Fred Allen, small capitals, in care of the station to which you are now listening. All votes must be in not later the next Tuesday morning, if you will, please. And now, Tiny, I know you in Portland always like to have the last word, so what is yours tonight? Well, just one parting suggestion to our audience, Fred. Friends, I'm going to ask you again, as I did earlier this evening. If you won't start to use Ipana toothpaste yourself, Ipana, you know, when used with massage, will help you to prevent or correct pink toothbrush. That sign of tender, flabby gums, which, if neglected, may lead to serious mouth disorders. Ipana toothpaste and salopatica are the two products of the Bristol Myers Company, which bring you this hour of smiles in Town Hall tonight. And I hope that when you think of Fred Allen in Town Hall, you remember Ipana toothpaste for the smile of beauty. Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Ipana, Sal Hepatica. This is 
is Fred Allen, ladies and gentlemen, saying good night to you and you and you. And don't forget, next Wednesday evening, we'll all be back waiting to greet you with our amateur contest and another hour of smiles in the old town hall. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.